Hello friends, welcome to this fourth video on mathematical logic. We are dealing with the theory of inference. There are going to be five different methods in which a theory of inference problem can be solved. And now we are looking into direct method. The part three video introduced you how we can use direct method to solve a given set of hypothesis and arrive at a conclusion. This fourth video will help you to solve statement kind of problem that is if a problem has been given to you in uh, format of a statement rather than the hypothesis being directly stated then how to form the hypothesis out of it and then solve for them using the theory of inference is what we are going to see in this video. Come on we will move on. The point over here is we will try to recollect the um, formulas which we have memorized for for solving any theory of inference. P comma Q is equivalent to P and Q for conjunction. P and P goes to Q is implying Q called as modus ponens. P goes to Q, Q goes to R implies P goes to R is called as hypothetical syllogism which is nothing but our chain rule. And by the formula of equivalence we have if P then Q is equivalent to negation P or Q. And contrapositive is the rule by which we flip the element if P then Q but it gets flipped with a negation quantity like negation Q then negation P which is equivalence of if P then Q which we call it as contrapositive. So memorizing these five formulas will help us solve the problems in a, a easier way and when we are into converting a problem statement into an hypothesis and then solving for it we need to know what are going to be the basic connectives which we are using negation conjunction disjunction conditional and biconditional negation is a unary operator which is represented as if p is going to be the proposition then the negation of p is given by either an inverted l with a p or with a tilde and a p conjunction of two statement is the and operator P and Q. So you call it as conjunction P and Q. Disjunction is the OR operator P or Q. This is your AND, this is your AND, and this is your OR. Unconditional if P then Q. You read it as if P then Q. And this is going to be biconditional, which works both ways. So P if and only if Q. So keeping these connectives in mind as well as these. Um, formulas in mind we will try to convert a problem statement into hypothesis and then solve for them using the direct methodology in this video come on we'll move on to problem number one first the problem is test the validity of the following arguments the first statement if it rains heavily then traveling will be difficult second statement if students arrive on time then traveling was not difficult they arrived on time so these three so there is a so so this part is nothing but our conclusion part so what is the conclusion we need to arrive at from these statements it did not rain heavily so now this has been given to us as statements so let us form propositions out of it and then convert the propositions into hypothesis or valid clues which are going to refer to these statements we will pick up the quantities that mean to us which is a statement Raining heavily is going to be one statement. Traveling will be difficult is other statement. Student arrive on time is other statement. Traveling was covered. Arriving on time was covered and raining heavily was also covered. So we have three statements over here. So let us give the propositions. Let P be the proposition. It rains heavily. Next, let us form the proposition Q, which represents traveling will be difficult. And next, let R be the proposition students arrive on time. Okay, so we have three different kind of statements which is appearing in this problem and for the three different statements we have allotted three propositions represented by P, Q and R. Now I have to convert these propositions into valid hypothesis which represents the given statements. So let the first line which I have over here be represented as hypothesis number one. What does our hypothesis number one say? If it rains heavily, 
then traveling will be difficult rain heavily is represented by p traveling will be difficult is represented by q these two statements are now connected by the connectives if and then we know that if and then is an conditional statement which is represented by p conditional q so how to represent this statement as if i write it as p conditional q then i read it as if p if it rains heavily then q then traveling will be difficult so this is how i convert my first statement into the hypothesis of logic kind now let us move to the second hypothesis hypothesis number 2 if students arrive on time then traveling was not difficult you need to notice there is a word not difficult but over here we have represented it as difficult so how to go from not difficult to difficult that is nothing but the negation of the statement and again we notice that there is an if part over here and a then part over there so the second statement is also of conditional type so how to make it as a conditional statement student arrive on time is represented as r so if r then traveling was not difficult not difficult will be represented as negation of q so the second hypothesis is given as if r then negation q let us move on to the third hypothesis which says they arrived on time students arrived on time is going to be the statement out of it so students arrived on time is given by r so my hypothesis number 3 is going to be r now using these set of three hypotheses i need to come to a valid conclusion what is the conclusion now for me they have said that the conclusion over here is going to be it did not rain heavily the word so now means that this part is going to be the conclusion out of the given statements so now let us find what is this represent it did not rain heavily it rains heavily is represented as p so it did not rain heavily will be represented as negation of p hence we need to make use of the hypothesis 1 2 1 3 that is if p then q if r then negation q and r to come at a conclusion called as negation p now this after the comprising uh, the statements into propositions and after converting the proposition into hypothesis gets converted to the type of problem which we did in our video number 3 so now these were given directly for us for solving in our last video but now we will have to frame these rules to get to the solvation part so this part plays an important role in your examination if the hypothesis are not framed properly then the conclusion may not be arrived in a proper way so you need to be very careful that the propositions which we write and the hypothesis which we create out of them are going to be proper to make that the conclusion remains proper you will have to pay attention to these kind of problem more in your examination as they carry more marks rather than the simple problems so we will start solving now using the direct method so now using your direct method we'll get on with solving of the problem we will have to introduce these hypotheses one after the other we will recollect the formulas which we have already memorized for conjunction modus ponens hypothetical syllogism equivalence and contrapositive step number 1 let me introduce the uh, we will see what are the related components let me introduce r so okay so this is going to be already existing rule so i write it as rule p now something related to r let me introduce my if r then negation q so this is also an existing rule so i make it as rule p now i know that a p and a if p then q will lead me to q by modus ponens now and r and if r then negation q will lead me to negation q this is called as rule t which follows from step 1 and step 2 and you call it i the name modus ponens i write it as mp as a short form of modus ponens since there is going to be no space for me but uh, 
it's better that you don't uh, use abbreviations in your examination but rather write them in full to get your full full marks right now step number four i have to introduce something related with q let me introduce my if p then q right this is going to be an existing form so i introduce it using my rule p now i know that negation q and if p then q will directly give me a uh, negation p if i use the rule modus tollens but since it is not going to be one which we have memorized for we will try to use the quantities which we memorized for so what we do is we flip this equation to get a negation q so if p then q on flipping gives me negation q then negation p this is going to be your rule t of step number 4 and you call it as contra positive right and now a negation q and a negation q then negation p will lead me to negation p so now i have got to the final stage using my rule t of step 3 and step 5 using p and if p then q implies q which is called by modus ponens hence we have now got the valid conclusion see the steps were very easy the only thing is that we need to know how to convert them from the statement format to the hypothesis format and after converting them if you have memorized these formulas in the proper way then the problems flow very easily to give you the format of conclusion we will move on with one more problem we will test the validity of the statement if i am going to study then i will not fail in max if i do not play basketball then i will study but i failed in max therefore i must have played basketball so we have few statements we need to convert them into proposition and the propositions to hypothesis and then we will see if the conclusion is arrived at the hypothesis using the direct method so that's going to be the problem for us now let us frame what are going to be the statements available i study is one part i will not fail in max is one part i do not play basketball is another part and uh, apart from that we don't have much more to go so let us denote the proposition p by i will study let q be the proposition i will not fail in max let r be the proposition i do not play basket ball so these are the three propositions which are available in the statement let me convert it into hypothesis so that we will be able to solve them for next i have a if and i have a then which is hidden over here if i study i will not fail in max so then is an hidden portion over here if and then is an conditional statement so how i can convert it as if p then q so a p then q is going to be my first statement what is going to be my hypothesis number 2 if i do not play basketball if i do not play basketball if r then i will study i will study is going to be my play so if p i do not play basketball i do not play basketball is r i will study will be denoted by p now hypothesis number 3 yes i failed in max i did not fail in max is your q but what is happening over here i failed in max so how to convert this did not fail to fail so it is going to be negation of my q so i have three hypothesis if i study i will not fail in max if i do not play basketball i will study and i failed in max now therefore tells that this part is my conclusion 
So what is my conclusion C? My conclusion C is I must have played basketball. So over here I have I do not play basketball but here the conclusion is I have played basketball. So the answer or the conclusion has to be negation of R. So using these three hypotheses I need to come to the conclusion negation R. We will see how this can be done fast. We will introduce the hypothesis one after the other to get the solution. We will introduce H1, H2, first step P, then Q, given statement. So you call it as rule P. Number two, the second statement will give me if R, then P. So this is going to be my rule P. Now, let me combine these two statements. My R goes to P and my P goes to Q. When I combine from over here to here, the chain link follows that if R then Q is a logically true statement that follows from step 2 and step 1 using your hypothetical syllogism. Now, let me introduce the next stage, step number 4, negation of Q. So, this is an existing rule. Therefore, I say it is a rule P. Now, I need a rule P which is going to have a negation Q to connect with this step number 3. So, let me flip this step number 3 in my step number 5 to get if R then Q goes to negation Q then a negation R. So, it is going to be a rule T of step number 4, uh, sorry, step number 3, which we take the flipping and the flipping is called as contra positive. Now, we are ready. A negation Q and a negation Q, then negation R. When we combine both of them, a P and a P goes to Q will lead me to a Q. So, over here, a negation Q and negation Q goes to negation R use me negation R. So this is again a rule T using my step 4 and step 5 and this is called by the name modus ponens. Hence we have arrived at the conclusion negation R using hypothetical syllogism, contrapositive and modus ponens. I hope the way how to convert a problem statement into propositions under propositions to hypothesis and then furthermore solving them using the laws of inference is going to be clear. Happy learning. Keep learning. Thank you.